Hello. Well, I guess we will go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everybody. I'm Nurse Linda. I'm one of the pre-mom uh, medical advisors and welcome. And remember if um, on your pre-mom app, under more, you can uh, always, you're welcome to schedule consults with me if you wanna chat one-on-one -on -one, uh, or have any further questions. Um, I can't go on forever here. I really could go on forever, but I'm not supposed to, so I'm gonna try to limit things a little bit. Okay, what is the topic today? Topic today is a quality and ovarian reserve. Um, all right, so let's talk about, let's talk about ovarian reserve first. Ovarian reserve, this is, this, this one's a lot easier than egg quality. We're going to get to egg quality in a minute. Ovarian reserve basically means how many eggs do we have left, right? Um, now, for those who don't know, women are born with all the eggs we're ever going to have. We ovulate one once we hit puberty each month, theoretically, um, and we go through our eggs in life. And when they're done, they're done. We don't make more, nothing like that. We are born with all of them. So if you're 32 years old, your eggs are 32 years old. Now, just a quick detour. In contrast, men make sperm about every 60 to 90 days. So they always have sperm that's nice and young and ready to go. Uh, that's why they can have babies so they're much older in life versus us who pretty much stop at that menopause age. Um, so ovarian reserve has to do with how many eggs do we have left? Now, of course, as we get older, we have fewer eggs left. So our ovarian reserve naturally goes down. How do we test that? How do I know where I'm at in that whole scope of things? Well, there are blood tests to do that. There are... Uh, lab work you can get done. Probably the most popular is a blood test called AMH or anti-malarian hormone. It's just a blood test. It could be done anytime in the cycle and that value will speak towards your ovarian reserve. In general, you like to see it above two, um, certainly above one. The news is it's gonna go down in all of us just like eventually all of us are gonna get some amount of gray hair as we get older. Some more than others, same with ovarian reserve. It's gonna go down in all women. And eventually it's gonna get down to literally zero and we're not gonna have eggs left, so to speak. We're gonna be fully in menopause at that point. So AMH is a blood test that will tell us where we're at. You can also get done uh, FSH and estradiol, which is more tied to the third day of your period, second, third, fourth day of your period. Those blood tests also will speak towards ovarian reserve. So that's those ovarian reserve testing. It doesn't tell us how well or how likely we are to get pregnant. It doesn't tell us um, what kind of, of embryos I would create or what my egg quality is. It does not tell you that. It literally is a number, a quantitative thing. It tells you how many eggs you have left. Now, in general, that itself does speak usually towards a quality. Because of course, as we get older, our ovarian reserve goes down and our egg quality goes down because our eggs are getting older. This happens with literally everything in our body as well right, is it gets older. So it's not as good as it used to be, right? My knees don't work as well as they used to kind of thing. I can tell you my memory is not as sharp as it used to be kind of thing. So as we get older and as our eggs uh, get older, then there certainly is an egg quality issue there. But in itself, ovarian reserve does not speak to egg quality. For example, um, I've had plenty of patients that in their 30s, in their early 30s, had ovarian reserve issues, meaning they had low ovarian reserve. Now, it shouldn't be like that at 32, but it was for them. And what that did tell me is they had fewer eggs left and probably they were going to be hitting menopause earlier 
than a gal their age who had perfectly normal ovarian reserve. So it does speak to that, but it doesn't mean that that young gal at 32 with an AMH of only, you know, 0.8 has an A quality issue. It does not mean that. It is a quantitative issue though, for sure. For example, if that young girl were to try to go do IVF and take fertility drugs with a low AMH, she probably wouldn't get that many eggs. Very similar to an older woman who, who did IVF might not get that many eggs. So again, to be clear, ovarian reserve does not speak to egg quality, though they do tend to go hand in hand as you get older. I hope that makes sense. Now let's talk about egg quality. Okay, this one is complicated, right? There really is no way to test egg quality until somebody takes the eggs out of your body. So if you were doing IVF, for example, uh, somebody could speak to your egg quality because they're looking, they see your eggs and they're going to create embryos out of them. Even today, there really is no special test or something that will tell you your egg quality. How the type of embryo that egg creates usually will let me know. For example, if a gal were to give me 10 eggs in an IVF and not a single one of them made it to the a blastocyst, or I could see poor quality embryos, that most likely would speak to poor quality eggs. But that really is the only way. So let's be really clear about that. Really the only way to tell what somebody's egg quality is, is you just like, you know what, if I asked you about your partner's sperm quality, could you take a look at him? Could you tell me by his age or what he does, what his sperm was like? No, you have to actually take it out of the body and look at it. Now, that being said, I can speak towards egg quality a little bit when it gets to older women, older women, women over 40. Most certainly for that individual, her egg quality is not as good at 40 as it was at 30. That's true. But I can't, I can't be more specific than that. Um, what can one do about egg quality? What can we do to make egg quality, to improve our, the quality of our eggs? That's another really tough one. Um, let me start by saying this. I'm gonna kind of go back to biology class a little bit here. Even sitting here as an old lady, my eggs are perfectly normal. You know why? because I am genetically normal. I've got normal chromosomes. I've got the normal count, normal chromosomes. Granted, I've had that testing done, I know that, but most of you sitting there will know whether or not you have a normal number of chromosomes, et cetera. The eggs in your body, I don't care if you're 32 or 47, the eggs in your body, as long as you are chromosomally normal, your eggs are normal. Sitting there right now, however, there is something that has to happen in order to have a baby with our eggs. Now that the same thing happens with sperm. And now this is where I'm gonna go tap into our biology class from high school. We all have 46 chromosomes. I have 23 pairs, okay? I got one chromosome from mom, one chromosome from dad on each of those 23 pairs. Now, in order to make a baby who's got 46 chromosomes, I can only give that baby 23 and my partner is going to give that baby 23. But like I told you, my eggs, just like all the cells in my body, have a perfect number of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes. So before I ovulate, my egg has to go through something called meiosis, where it splits its chromosome number in half, down to 23. And it divides out and the other 23 chromosomes go over here into something called a polar body, but it's like the other half of the egg, if you will. And again, men do the same thing that way. When once I ovulate, my egg comes down there to get fertilized and oh, here comes the sperm. He's done, his sperm have done the same thing. They've cut their chromosomes down in half to 23 and here's my little egg with 23. And together we make a baby with 46. That's where the problem comes in. I do not divide my chromosomes down in half very good anymore. 
my eggs are old. So when my little 23 pair of chromosomes line up in that egg and you know, half of them are supposed to go over here and half of them are supposed to go over here. They do not do that job very well. Maybe 24 come over here and 22 go over there. Or 20 come over here and 26 go over here. All those little spindles that have to come out and do that work, they're older. They don't do it as well anymore. And I create an abnormal egg. That's what egg quality is about. And that's why when we get older, our egg quality suffers. So sitting here, egg quality is perfectly fine. It's when we go to ovulate. So what can one do about egg quality? That's a hot topic. That's a hot topic. And there's a lot of opinion in here, right? Bottom line for me, I can tell you is that you really can't change a quality because it's so tied to age. Certainly, at least that's what I believe. Now, you know, you'll read a lot about, there are a lot of supplements out there, um, probably CoQ10, DHEA. These are all the latest in what even doctors prescribe for, for a quality. Um, the doctor I worked for was very much against DHEA. Um, and felt that it had negative impacts on the cycle. Yet you'll find another doctor who will tell you, we've done studies and it improves a quality. So, you know, studies, I can, you can find me a study that says A, and I will find you a study that says A is not true, it, but B is on almost everything. So when we look at studies, keep in mind, there are almost an equal number of studies often out there that show nothing, nothing helps and nothing um, is going to make a difference. But that being said, it's good to always collect all of the information. Um, certainly taking good antioxidants, leading a healthier lifestyle, all of that kind of thing is only going to help in our general health, isn't it? We know that. So that can only potentially help. But I like you to understand and take the pressure off yourself that you can alter your egg quality. Again, I'm personally a believer in there's not a lot we can do about our egg quality. Again, because often it is tied to, to age. Now that doesn't mean, even if you have an egg quality issue, and again, I'm in a, a woman of 40, she has an egg quality issue, she does. Um, it could be that seven out of 10 of her eggs will be abnormal nowadays, whereas it used to be four out of 10 you know, we're abnormal because even young girls are going to have abnormal legs, certainly. So the reality is, is that, yes, you have an equality issue if you're over 40, uh, certainly. And as we even sometimes hit late 30s. But it doesn't mean all of your eggs are bad, like I just said, right? Even if nine out of 10 of your eggs were poor quality, you have one good, perfect egg in those 10. Why not get pregnant with that one? Uh, now, personal anecdotal story here. Um, you guys all know if you've listened to me before or read anything, you know I'm a classic PCOS person. Um, I've got, been through IVFs and PCOS, I've got every symptom of it. And it most certainly complicated my ability to have kids in life. Now, I was lucky enough that um, I, like I said, I didn't get pregnant from my IVFs, but I, I have three children. I've been pregnant four times. I had a miscarriage at about 11 weeks, um, but I did get pregnant three times, but thanks to PCOS, my kids are all about 10 years apart. Um, just because either it took that long to figure out when I was ovulating or it's just lucky. But my, my last child, my son, I had at 45 years old. So does that mean every 45 year old is going to get pregnant out there? Absolutely not. Did I do anything special to get pregnant? Absolutely not. Um, I think um, now it's funny. PCOS is a funny thing, or at least it was for me. I actually, um, I don't know if it was because I didn't ovulate regularly my whole life, but after 40, my periods and my cycles got much more regular. Um, and I kind of almost even knew when I was going to be ovulating. Um, this is before all the fun pre-mom and the apps all came out. So you kind of just had to wing it a little bit back, back then. 
but I thought I was mid cycle and I did want to try to get pregnant. And I put a little pillow under my bottom and, and just laid in the bed afterwards. And that was the cycle that I indeed did get pregnant. And my son is 14 years old now. So yes, even if you do have egg quality issues, it's just a numbers game. Nobody has a hundred percent bad eggs. I don't know when we're going to see the next good one, but you can count on, you do have good ones there. So even if you've been told you have an egg quality issue, or even if you're older and you know that you have egg quality issues simply because of your age, don't think that you can't still get pregnant because you can't, but be real about it. Be real and realize that, you know, again, if I said nine out of 10 eggs were abnormal, that means it's going to take, what, 10 months of potentially ovulating before I hit that one, et cetera. And I've got to make sure we time things. So that's why it's true. It is, it can be a long shot when, you know, when you're 45 years old, but it does happen and it can happen. Um, if you guys have any questions or want to talk about this anymore, you're, like I said, you're always welcome to get on. Uh, the pre-mom app and schedule a consult with me or any one of the other um, consultants. We have some um, consultants that specialize in diet and supplements and all that kind of stuff. That's not necessarily my specialty. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, look up those consultants and they'll be able to help you. Otherwise, you know, I'm always available to chat, talk and all that stuff. All right. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me today, guys. And I hope I was able to enlighten you guys on a few things. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.